I, I, came, I came with a purpose. Mm. I decided about three or four months ago, uh, out of the blue really, all Australians once in a lifetime should make a pilgrimage to Gallipoli. And, and it is a, uh, an experience that will live with me forever. The incredible emotions that, mm. that one feels, the, the senselessness, the, the foolishness of the, of, of the planning, and the incredible odds that the men scrambled up these ravines. Uh, they're a glory to Australia, and, and let's face it, they've assumed the, the qualities of a Greek god, and forever and ever they will be Greek gods to us. All right. <laughs> they need bag to take it home. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, okay? <laughs> I just spoke to a few of the guys who are employed permanently to look after all the grave sites uh, here at Gallipoli. And of course, as I said, it's a big problem. The rubbish around this place now, it's just unspeakable. Maybe it's a job for some inventive Australians to put some teams together so that when it's all over, we can help these guys clean up the mess that we left. The next morning I learned a valuable lesson about filming in Gallipoli kind of conditions. You see, I'd been filming for a whole day, like walking up hills, falling down gullies and filming for this doco. And by the end of the day, I went back to the hotel and was just totally exhausted, didn't think of looking at the gear. Next morning I got up, got onto the ferry to go uh, back to do my final day's filming. And I met this guy called Tony Wright, who is a brilliant author and uh, journalist here in Australia who's written this book called Turn Right at Istanbul, all about the Australian pilgrimage to Gallipoli. So I asked for an interview and he agreed, so I quickly got the camera out there on the ferry and we did a great interview. And uh, what you'll see now is a portion of that interview complete with authentic Gallipoli dirt all over the camera lens. Sorry. Well, obviously this was the 90th, so it was going to be always very, very big. But I don't think anyone understood just how under pressure that place was going to be and what the conditions were going to be like. And a lot of people became ill. Even my own daughter suffered exposure. Um, so I think at least there should be some sort of a caution put out that the conditions are extraordinary for a lot of people, particularly older people. Um, there will be no space if you don't get there very early. And uh, as the night goes on, it gets very, very, very cold. And um, I think, you know, obviously a huge amount of people will keep going there, but perhaps a lot of people should consider going there when it's not Anzac Day and um, just wandering around the peaceful battlefields and enjoy it themselves. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed the second part of our program called Anzac Now. In the third part, we're going to look at Anzac forever and what the spirit of Anzac means for the future of Australia, a multicultural Australia, an Australia that is very different to the days of Gallipoli. And so I've done a lot of interviews, got a lot of different people's ideas and thoughts about the Gallipoli spirit and the future of Australia. So I hope you'll join me for Anzac forever. <laughs>